Hello everyone, oh my goodness, today we are in lesson number one and I am so excited that you're here with us. Lesson number one, we are gonna get straight into it. It is called, Do You Know Who You Are? It is so important that we know who we are in Christ because everything that we do often flows from what we think we deserve or you know how we see ourselves and so if you don't see yourself as a child of god then you might start to settle for things that are not um kingdom worthy you might settle in your calling settle in relationships because you don't truly see yourself the way that christ sees you and so our identity is huge in fact even when you go to the airport you can't even get to your destination without first showing your identification and so if you don't know who you are, then you're going to have a very hard time walking in the things of God. When I first became a Christian, I had just left this life where I was in the porn industry for seven years. I was an adult film star. I did not know who I was. Because I didn't know who I was, I settled in with everything in life. You know, I dated men that could never truly love me, but at the same time, I didn't really even love myself because I didn't know how to. And, you know, I sold myself for money. I mean, I did the lowest of the lowest things all because I didn't know who I was. And so when I first became a Christian, the Holy Spirit really encouraged me to take an entire year off of dating so that I could just grow in God and get to know who I was so that I could stop settling in life. I mean, God wanted to heal my heart. He wanted to bless my life. He wanted to restore my life. And he wanted me to walk in the fullness of who he is. And I couldn't do that until I knew who I was. So I had to get rid of all distractions. And you know, oftentimes when you don't know who you are, you'll lean on others to tell you who you are. And so for me, I found my value and I found my worth in being in a relationship and being intimate with a man. And so God was like, none of that, girlfriend. Like, <laughs> my daughter, we got to get rid of all of this so that you can just grow in me. So what that looked like giving up a year of dating, I didn't go hang out with guys one-on-one. -on -one. I wasn't talking to guys on the phone all the time because I... I needed to be deprived of things so that God could heal me of things. So one of my biggest things that, you know, uh, that I was so desperate for was affirmation. Because of the fact that I didn't know who I was, I relied on a man to tell me who I was. And so coming out of the porn industry, right? When I was in porn, you know, for all the wrong reasons, men would tell me, you're beautiful, we love you, for all the wrong reasons, right? But when I became a Christian and I started going to church, Nobody told me I was beautiful. I felt it was like crickets. And I remember having this moment with God and I was like, God, am, am I ugly? And God was like, daughter, why do you ask me this? And I said, because nobody tells me that I'm beautiful. No men are trying to date me. Nobody is affirming me. And I'm just wondering, like, am I good enough? And God just said, daughter, I am doing a great work within you. Just like, and this Holy Spirit speaking, just like I told the Pharisees to first wash the inside of the cup before they wash the outside, that's exactly what I'm doing in you. See, too often we focus so much on the outward appearance, but God is always focused on our inward appearance. He's focused on the appearance of our hearts. And so what God was doing, he was depriving me of affirmation so that he could heal me of that. And he said, I want you to be so secure in yourself, Brittany, that if nobody ever affirms you again, it doesn't phase you because you know who you are. <clears throat> and so this was like a year long journey <clears throat> of just growing in the Lord. And so, um, as I started to grow in God and I started to recognize how loved I am by God, I quit. I, I made the decision that I would no longer settle in relationships. See, so often when we don't recognize how loved and how valuable we are, then we settle for men or women who could never love us the way that God loves us because we don't love ourselves the way that God loves us, right? The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. First, you have to love yourself in order to properly love your neighbor or in order to properly love your spouse. And so God had to do this great 
great work within me. And I believe that that is what God is doing in you today. Um, my husband and I, we recently remodeled our backyard. And one of the things, we've been married for, for five years. And one of the things that I really wanted the five years that we've had our house is a garden. And I finally got a garden. And I was so excited as we planted everything that literally I go out there every single day. And I'm like, oh, I see growth or nothing today and uh, one day when I went out there I noticed that there were tons of holes in the leaves and I'm like what is going on here like I know there's a bug but I can't find anything eating uh, eating my leaves I don't know what it is and so I just kept going out there day after day and I just noticed my garden was just diminishing more and more holes and I just felt this nudge one day look a little closer and so that's exactly what I did. I started really examining the front and the back of the leaves and I noticed that there were these teeny tiny little caterpillars that were blending in with the leaves. And I had to start picking them off one by one. See, so many times like we get attacked by these uh, subliminal caterpillars that Although it's taking, it's changing maybe the way that we see ourselves, it doesn't actually change who you are. So what I mean by that is like my broccoli plants were getting attacked by caterpillars, but that doesn't mean that my broccoli plant is no longer a broccoli plant. So maybe the cat, the subliminal caterpillars in your life are, you know, you battle with so many different kinds of insecurities, you know, you lack value, you, you lack, when you look at yourself, you don't think that you're actually worthy. You don't feel like you're worthy to attract a great man or a great woman. And just because you feel that way, it doesn't mean that's who you are. See, my broccoli plant was still a broccoli plant. And despite what might be attacking your identity today, you are still a child of the Most High God. You are still an heir to the throne. You are a joint heir with Jesus. You are an ambassador for Christ. You were made in the image of God, and that is who you are. Satan is always on the attack. He wants to attack your identity because if he can t attack your identity, then he can rob you of your authority and he can get you to settle in life. And and that's why it's imperative that we recognize who we are in Christ so that we can take authority over the enemy, so that we can cast negative thoughts down or demonic thoughts down, so that we can make them submit to Christ. But you can't do any of this if you don't know who you are. And so, um, you know, there was this, this uh, show called Shark Tank that me and my husband used to watch, okay? Go with me here. Okay. There was this guy that came on and he had this little yellow round thing. And I was like, is this guy bringing on like a dog toy? Like, what is this thing, right? And he came out and he said, this is the scrub daddy. And he starts talking about the different things that his scrub daddy does. That when it's under cold water, it can get out the tough stains, but it's also gentle enough to use on your dishes. It won't scratch a thing. And I was amazed by this. I was like, well, that's a pretty cool sponge because you can use it on anything and he's claiming that it's gonna clean out all of the tough and, and even the minor stains. And I actually own one now, it's incredible, I love it. Uh, not sponsored, by the way. Um, but what I found was so interesting about this is that I didn't understand what the invention was until I heard from the inventor. Same is true for you. You are not going to understand what you were invented to do until you hear from your inventor. You won't understand what you were created to do until you hear from your creator. You won't recognize what you were called to do until you hear from your caller. So if you've been struggling with insecurities, with fear, with doubt, with depression, with trust issues, if you are just plain miserable and you complain all the time or you're, you have these bouts of anger and it's because you don't know who you are. It's because you don't recognize how loved you are. It's because you don't recognize how forgiven you are in Christ. If you've deemed yourself unworthy, it's because you don't know how valuable you are to God's kingdom. And so the only way that we are gonna discover our identity and walk in our authority so that we won't settle and we'll wait. See, because right now what we're talking about is single and content. You can't be content in waiting. You can't be content and single if you don't know who you are. 
When I didn't know who I was, I settled for any bozo that walked into my life that showed me a little bit of attention. Can any of you relate? Please tell me I'm not the only one. But when I recognize my identity through spending time with Jesus on a daily basis, then I started to go, wow. I don't want to settle in a relationship. I want a man of God who's powerful, who's anointed, who's called. And um, that's exactly who God brought me. But first I had to see myself as powerful, anointed, and called. Because you'll always subconsciously attract who you think you deserve. And if you don't think that you deserve somebody that is powerful and anointed and called, then you'll settle. And so what, what I want to challenge you to do today is get into the presence of the Lord. You need to seek him through prayer, through worship, and through reading the Bible. You know, the Bible is going to renew. This is how you'll renew your mind. So you can get rid of all the thoughts, all the labels that other people have put on you, that even your own thoughts have put on you, that the enemy has put on you. And you're going to erase all of that through spending time in the Word and in the presence of God. So that is exactly how you are going to discover your identity. I love you so much, and I hope that lesson number one has blessed you, and I'm excited for you to keep going through this course. God bless you, friends. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's lesson and we pray it was a blessing for your life. My husband and I just recently founded lovealwaysministries.com and it is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and we are dedicated to helping people discover God's love, walk in their mm -hmm. calling, and leading through purity. Yes. And we want to continue to just give out all of this free content for you guys. And so in order to do so, our ministry is run off donations. And so we ask that if this uh, video has blessed you today that you just head on over to lovealwaysministries.com slash donate and give today because we cannot do what we do without you. Hey guys, we love and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for all that you do. We're continually praying for you right here at Love Always Ministries. God bless you.